The primary learning objective of this chapter is to learn and understand what is meant by the term transverse metacentric height of a ship and its importance to the vessel's stability and equilibrium. Within this context, it is also important to understand the effects on this transverse metacentric height when there is liquid which is allowed to move freely inside a tank or deck of the vessel. This chapter also deals with the effects of the metacentric height on how a vessel rolls and returns to the upright and how this is shown on the curve of statical stability. It also covers the effects of dry docking on the ship's stability and the initial inclining experiment. The vertical upward force of buoyancy of a vessel in the upright and again in a slightly inclined condition will intersect at a point known as the transverse metacenter and normally marked M. This point of intersection is considered in stability as a fixed point but should only be considered applicable up to a maximum angle of heel of 10 degrees because the intersection point of these verticals at larger angles of heel will not be in the same position. The position of M is normally measured from the keel, K, as a distance, K, M, and as this is dependent on the shape of the water plane area and underwater volume, it can be calculated by the shipbuilders for various drafts and provided on a table for the ship's officers. KM equals KB plus BM. These are both dependent on underwater volume. The transverse metacentric height is the distance measured along the vessel's transverse center line between the metacenter M and the ship's center of gravity G. This is a measure of the vessel's initial stability or ability to return to the upright when rolling and it is essential in stability that the value of the initial metacentric height, GM, is known. Normally the ship is loaded to keep the center of gravity low and below the initial metacenter. In a condition of positive stability, the position of M is above G. If G moves above M, it will introduce a turning moment to incline the vessel and cause an initial negative metacentric height. When the transverse metacentric height, GM, is a suitable value, the writing lever, GZ, will be of moderate size, and the writing moment will be of acceptable value to bring the vessel upright at a comfortable rate. When a suitable GM is achieved, it will result in less strain on the cargo and equipment lashings and a comfortable movement for the crew. The speed of the rolling motion is moderate and movement more gentle. With a transverse metacentric height, GM, which is too small, the corresponding writing moment will also be small, with a slow roll to larger angles of heel resulting from only small disturbing waves. Even though abrupt strain on lashings may not be caused, there will be a large strain due to the excessive angles. The biggest danger is that, with the consumption of bunkers and water from double bottoms and other low tanks, G will rise further directly away from the discharged weights, and GM will become smaller or even negative. If a ship has a large transverse metacentric height, GM, value, then the corresponding writing lever, GZ, will be large, and it is known as a stiff ship and will roll rapidly. The movements can be abrupt and cause cargo and equipment to move and possibly cargo lashings to break. In extreme conditions, damage can result to the ship, cargo, equipment, and even crew. The period of roll of a ship is obviously dependent on the vessel's transverse metacentric height, GM, and this factor is often used in small boats to determine the light ship position of G instead of using the inclining experiment. See later notes. It is also important to realize that it is dangerous when the natural rolling period of a vessel becomes synchronized with the rolling period generated by the waves. This can result in an amplification of the normal roll angles of roll, with the angles of heel gradually reaching extremely large angles, unless this synchronization is stopped. This can be easily achieved by adjusting the ship's course and changing the relationship between the two periods.
When the centre of gravity, G, is at the same point as M, there is no righting or inclining lever, and the ship is said to be in neutral equilibrium. The vessel will roll over without resistance when influenced by an external force, such as waves. Under normal circumstances, as it rolls, M will eventually move upwards and prevent the ship from capsizing. When the centre of gravity, G, is above M, there is no longer any immediate righting lever, but instead an inclining lever, and the ship is said to be in negative equilibrium. The vessel will roll by its own inclining moment, and without any external influences. Under normal circumstances, as the ship rolls, M will eventually move and create an equilibrium position at an inclined angle known as the angle of lull. The angle of lull is the angle of inclination at which a vessel with an initial negative upright, GM, will come to rest in equilibrium with positive stability. There will be an identical angle of lull on both sides of the upright, and, unfortunately, the vessel will tend to flop over to the opposite angle of lull after being brought upright by an external force. In order to establish the stability of a vessel over a range of angles of heel, it is necessary to draw a graph showing the GZ lever, the vertical axis, at different angles of heel, the horizontal axis, normally angles from upright 0 degrees to 90 degrees heel. This will provide at a glance a picture of the anticipated stability of a vessel as it rolls around in heavy seas. When the curve is correctly drawn, it will illustrate several important items of data. The GZ at any angle of heel. The angle of vanishing stability, where the curve crosses the x-axis. The angle of heel where the GZ is maximum, the peak of the curve. The range of stability, from origin to angle of vanishing stability. Initial transverse GM. This is the vertical value where a tangent to the curve at the origin reaches one radian, 57.3 degrees, on the horizontal scale. Angle of deck edge immersion, C, where the freeboard disappears and the C reaches the deck level on one side. It is the point of contraflexure, where the curve changes from a concave shape to a convex shape. The dynamical stability, the external work done in inclining the vessel to a specific angle of heel. It is the area under the curve up to that specific angle multiplied by the displacement. A ship at sea must at all times have the following residual stability. This stability criterion is defined in terms of the curve of statical stability. Area under the curve from 0 degrees to 30 degrees must be not less than 0 0.055 meter radians. Area under the curve from 0 degrees to 40 degrees must be not less than 0 0.09 meter radians. Area between 30 degrees and 40 degrees to be not less than 0.03 meter radians. Maximum GZ to be not less than 0.2 meters and occur at an angle of heel of not less than 30 degrees. Initial GM to be not less than 0.15 meters. Note. If the angle at which water enters the hull is less than 40 degrees, then that angle is to be used instead of 40 degrees as specified above. If liquid within the ship is free to move, then when the vessel rolls due to an external force such as a wave, the liquid will move to the low side, 
causing the center of gravity, G, to move off the center line, so reducing the affecting writing lever, GZ, which is trying to bring the vessel upright. As they are interdependent, this reduction in GZ can be likened to having a smaller metacentric height, GM, and therefore it is considered that when there is a free surface effect on a ship, there is a smaller effective metacentric height, GM, value, similar to that which would be found with the same ship having no free liquids, but with far less positive stability. Where I is the second moment of area of the free liquid surface. V is the volume of displacement of the vessel. Density 1 is the density of the liquid in the tank, and density 2 is the density of the water in which the ship is floating. And N is the number of equal width compartments separated by longitudinal bulkheads. This factor is vitally important with reference to the stability of a ship and can result in a vessel's capsizing. It is always necessary to keep the amount of free liquid at a minimum. The best method to reduce the effect of free liquid is at the design stage of a vessel, with the introduction of longitudinal bulkheads within tanks. The loss of GM is dependent on the number of compartments within a tank, which are created by dividing the tank by longitudinal bulkheads. From the previous free surface effect formula, it can be seen that the number of equal width compartments are actually squared, and therefore with one longitudinal bulkhead, or two compartments, the effect of the free surface is reduced to a quarter, and similarly with two bulkheads, or three compartments, the effect is reduced to one-ninth. The best methods to reduce the possibility of an already small GM going into a negative value are the following. Reduce any effects of free liquid in bunker and water tanks. Consume bunkers and fresh water from the high tanks if possible. Finish using one tank of bunkers or fresh water completely before starting on the next. Pump out bilges frequently and keep empty. Avoid accumulation of ice and snow on decks and keep scuppers and freeing ports clear. To rectify the situation when a vessel is lying at an angle of low due to a negative initial transverse metacentric height, GM, the position of G must be moved downwards to return the ship to a positive GM. However, it is very critical to initially make certain it is an angle of lull and not a list due to unevenly distributed cargo. Steps to take to return the vessel to a positive initial transverse metacentric height, GM, are the following. Press up any slack tanks. Transfer bunkers, or FW, to lower tanks, one at a time, and select those tanks which are subdivided longitudinally. Fill double bottoms, one at a time, starting with the low side first. This avoids the ship coming upright and flopping over to the lull on the other side. Once again, select those tanks which are subdivided longitudinally, if possible. Never start by filling the tanks on the high side first. Drop derricks if topped. Periodically, a ship must be taken out of the water for bottom cleaning and maintenance. There are many different ways of achieving this, but placing the vessel in a dry dock is the most universal method. The ship will rest on a line of blocks along the center of the dock, and then be supported by bilge blocks or side shores. In order to be placed accurately on the central line of blocks, the ship must be brought in slightly trimmed by the stern. The water is pumped out until only the stern touches the blocks, and the vessel can then be lined up with the other blocks. Now begins a period which is critical to the stability of the vessel. As the water is pumped out further, there will be less underwater volume and less upthrust exerted by the water, and therefore a new upthrust P 
at the stern blocks replaces this water upthrust, causing the vessel to change her trim. This unfortunately also reduces the effective transverse metacentric height, GM. Thus the original transverse metacentric height has been reduced with a consequent loss of writing lever, GZ, and writing moment. This will reduce further as the water level continues to fall and the water plane area reduces. However, the vessel will then be supported by keel blocks and bilge blocks or side supports along its complete length, which will keep the vessel upright. It is therefore critical to have sufficient positive metacentric height on initial entry into the dry dock. This will retain positive stability and keep the vessel upright until external measures are introduced to avoid the vessel falling over and off the blocks. Note: This figure shows the vessel inclined to a small angle to indicate the forces involved. In practice, the vessel must be upright on entering the dock. When a ship is built, it is difficult to determine the initial position of the center of gravity for the light condition, known as the light kg. It is, however, relatively easy to find the height of the metacenter from the keel, because this is a function of the underwater volume. To calculate the position of the light ship's center of gravity, the vessel must undergo an inclining experiment, where a known weight already on board is moved a measured horizontal distance transversely across the deck. This will cause a corresponding shift of the vessel's center of gravity, g, and if the resulting angle of inclination is measured, then the initial transverse metacentric height, gm, and the position of the center of gravity, g, can be calculated. The necessary conditions for doing the inclining experiment are as follows. The ship should be in the light condition or as near as practicable to it. There should be water in the boilers to working level and the engine room spares should be aboard, but no other dead weight. There should be no slack tanks, therefore no free surface effect. Any loose weights should be secured and just the minimum number of people aboard necessary to conduct the experiment. The ship should be lying freely afloat away from the quay, with the mooring rope slack. Ideally, it should be a calm day, otherwise the vessel should be head to wind.